You can watch me when I fall, when I cry, when I get shot, when I go to jail, when I die. You can watch. Your homie Gab is in the building. Influential hip hop artist of all time, Tupac Shakur, but the rapper, actor, activist, and poet died violently after he was shot and killed in Las Vegas in 1996. Tupac's body of work continues to resonate 25 years after his death through his music, his words, and his visionary spirit. With more on Tupac's legacy, hip hop historian Kevin Powell joins us. Kevin, of course, is one of the New York cast members of the original The Real World and The Reboot. Uh, good morning to you both. It's great to see you both. Thank you so much. So, Kevin, you interviewed Tupac on several occasions. Help us understand the type of person he was outside of his role as an entertainer. Well, it's funny you mentioned the real world because that's actually how we met at Jack the Rapper in 1993, the summer of 93. I was a fan of his because of his role in the film Juice, which I thought was breathtaking, James Dean-esque, and little did I know that he was a fan of mine. I knew that I wanted to write a story for him, and literally it turned into three years of, of four cover stories over the course of time. And he was an incredible human being. There was a lot of, obviously, uh, ups and downs in his life, uh, uh, things that people consider contradictions. But Tupac was a very honest, vulnerable, passionate human being. And it's funny because I, in that first article I did on him with the, uh, him in his infamous straight jacket pose, I actually said he was the James Dean of the hip hop generation. And little did I know he would only live to 25, James Dean to 24. But we can see 28 years, 30, his 50th birthday, and all these years later since he died, 25 years since he died, he's become a global icon that rivals James Dean, Elvis, Marilyn Monroe, Bob Marley, uh, a few people who we can say you can go anywhere in the world and people know Tupac's name. That's what he's become for so many different types of people. Kevin, it's so funny. I'm kind of laughing right now because like right before the show started, I was talking to my husband who is a serious hip hop head and we were talking wow. about Tupac and that's exactly the comparison. He said, you know, he's like James Dean. That's exactly what he said. So it's so interesting that wow. you bring that up. Um, and the thing about him is, you know, he emerges during this era of like gangster rap, right? But this guy is like an incredible poet. He's That's you know right. aware of social issues. He weaves them into his lyrics. Um, what do you think he would be writing about today? Oh my gosh, you know, first of all, if you go back, there's MTV clips where he talked about in an interview, Donald Trump and greed back in the early 1990s. This is someone who wrote songs like Keep Your Head Up and Dear Mama, which I believe foreshadowed things like the Me Too movement. This is someone who talked a lot about racism in this country, which certainly foreshadowed the Black Lives Matter movement. I believe that Tupac Shakur would have become a, a spokesperson in a way that we haven't seen in a long time. I think his impact would have been comparable to what John Lennon represented in his post Beatles life, what Marvin Gaye, Marvin Gaye represented, you know, what's, what, what's going on on what Bob Marley represented, what Nina Simone represented, what Joni Mitchell's represented. Mm. You know, we didn't really get to see the totality of his genius. And I also believe that his greatest impact would have probably been as an actor. I mean, imagine Tupac Shakur, and I love Chavik Bozeman, and rest in peace to my friend Chavik Bozeman, but imagine Tupac Shakur in the Black Panther film, given his background as a son, literally, of a Black Panther of Fanny Shakur, his late mother. Yeah, Kevin, um, I agree with you that uh, I, I believe, uh, just as an amateur film buff, that uh, Juice, Tupac's uh, performance in Juice, is one of the most incredible, most searing performances I've ever seen for an actor debuting. I think it was his first film role, right? Uh, debut right. Yeah. on the screen. I absolutely agree that it is like James Dean uh, or Marlon Brando in The Wild One. I mean, that was sort of what I thought of right. um, when I saw uh, Pac in that film because the movie is a good, it's a great movie and all the performances are excellent, but his, perf I was riveted. It was just, I'd never seen anything up to that point on screen like this. Um, but, you know, and so he was more than just a rapper, which maybe a lot of people may just recognize him as such. He was an actor. He was a poet. He went to the Baltimore School for the Arts with Jada Pinkett Smith, who shared a never before seen poem written by Pac on the eve of what would have been his 50th birthday. I want to play some of that. Some say nothing gold can last forever. And to believe this, I need no proof. I have witnessed all that was pure in me and be changed by the evil men can do. The innocence possessed by children once lived inside my soul, but surviving years with criminal peers has turned my warm heart to cold. I used to dream and fantasize, but now I'm scared to sleep, petrified not to live or die, but to awaken and still be me. 
It is true that nothing gold can last. We will all one day see death. When the purest hearts are torn apart, lost souls are all that's left. Down on my knees I beg of God to save me from this fate. Let me live to see what was gold in me before it's all too late. This poem, uh, Kevin, was written while he served time on Rikers Island. You interviewed him there in 1995. Help yeah. us, our viewers, understand his past, how that shaped who he was. And did you have a sense that his tragic end that his story would end in the way that it did? Did you see any signs or, because I think for a lot of people, they will look at his life, especially uh, after he got out of prison and wonder, it didn't have to be this way. Yeah, let me let me say this, you know, I, when I, I'm trying not to get emotional here because it is his 50th birthday, but you know, I literally did three cover stories for Quincy Jones's Bad Vibe magazine on Tupac, and then I was in Vegas when he died. It was a cover story for Rolling Stone, and I'm literally working on a book now that'll be out in two years, 2023, the 50th anniversary year of hip hop about Tupac Shakur. And I've done a deep dive into his life in ways that a lot of folks have not in, in, in our in our profession. And you know, his mother, you can't talk about his life without talking about a Fanny Shakur uh, and her being a Black Panther, her being a part of the civil rights movement, the black power movement, him literally being born into this cross section of, of women's rights and black rights and the gay liberation movement, all those things that happened as he was being born in 1971, uh, literally, you know, being targeted from an early age because of who his family was politically, uh, the attacks we've learned in the years since through the media and, 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 and release files that there's been things around the FBI pursuing, you know, targeting people. We just saw the movie that got nominated for an Oscar about Fred Hampton Jr., Fred Hampton Sr., pardon me. And so Tupac very much was aware of all of that. And I believe that that's why he felt he was not going to live a long life. And when I did that interview at Rikers Island, he said, I want to tell the whole truth. I'm trusting you, Kevin Powell. In fact, he said to me when he was alive, he wanted me to be Alex Haley to his Malcolm X, because I think he believed as a young man, you know, he only lived to 25, that he would not have a lot of time, which is why he gave me so much and so much exclusivity. And I remember we leaving Rikers Island. Island, uh, uh, Emery and, and Vlad, and just really wishing that I could take him with me. But I also remember uh, his publicist, Karen Lee, saying at the time, this is probably the only quiet moment Tupac will have in his life, literally while he's sitting in this jail for these, these months, which was about a year. And that's really tragic when you think about it. And the last time I talked to him, um, it was for the famous Death Row cover story with him and Suge Knight and Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg on a cover, uh, mimicking the famous casino movie poster. And I remember just saying, you know, can you, what can we do to stop this growing East Coast, West Coast thing, this thing between you and Biggie and Suge and Diddy at the time. And, and, you know, I think he, you know, I think he was just trying to just, you know, figure out what was happening in his life. He was angry about getting shot the first time, but I also do believe sadly that he didn't think he was going to live a long time, which is why he compressed so much into his life in a short period of time, literally making movies up to the last minute, making music up to the last minute. And it's, 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 um, I'll say this because I try to find hope in Tupac's life, you know, that he did more in 25 years than many people will do in 75 years or 100 years of life. And there's some lessons there that I think are invaluable for us about race, around gender, around manhood, around mental health, things that I've learned that I'll reveal in the book in two years that have been really incredibly profound. And I just hope that wherever people enter into Tupac's life, they're able to see see some of the good, even with some of the things that are negative, some of the things that he said about folks, you know, like Biggie, you know, the things that were said about women, the, the, the sexual assault charge, which he maintained his innocence around until the end of his life, you know, but he did say to me in that interview in prison that I'm not guilty of hurting this woman, but I am guilty of not stopping my male friends from doing something to this woman, which is huge for a man to say in spite of what he was under, the pressures he was under. So he was a lot of things to a lot of people. And what I'm, I want to do and I want people to do is to humanize him and see the whole picture, not just thug like, not just gangster, not just this rapper, but this is someone who loved Shakespeare, who loved ballet, you know, uh, who wrote this incredible emotional poetry that Jada Pinkett read. It's, he was a complex human being.